My name is Andrew Fillingham. I'm with Ampere. Another thing that you want to definitely have in all of your builds, and that's our stance, is ground fault detection or isolation monitoring. What is it? All isolation monitoring is doing is it's telling you how connected your high voltage is to your low voltage or your chassis. In an ideal world, they're completely separated. The isolation monitor tells you how connected they are. This is measured in ohms per volt, and the magic number that everyone wants to be above is 500 ohms per volt. If you're above that, it's considered safe. If you're below that, the vehicle should not start up. Isolation monitoring prevents a lot of things, a lot of bad things from happening. It protects your power electronics, so you can fry your car, basically, if you have bad isolation. And it can also expose the driver or whoever's working the car to a voltage when they come in contact with the chassis. From the T2C user guide from EV Controls, you know, they mention the results of poor isolation, blowing up controllers to damaging your Tesla inverter boards, frying the component, you gotta buy a new one and try again. So without this simple device, if you don't build your high voltage correctly, you can damage all your components. I took a log of what this looks like in an actual drive. It's a lot of squiggles, but basically it's just to show that your isolation varies as you drive. It varies with temperature, it varies with like how hot your batteries are, the weather, but the main thing is you just want it to be above that 500 ohms per volt. In our cars, we know everything's correctly hooked up and working well when we're actually at that 10,000 ohms per volt range. Whenever we get below 1,000, we actually set a warning to tell the user something's not right. So we're operating about 30 times above what the standard is. Isolation can happen from very little things. A coolant leak can come up through a bolt on your cooling plate and just a single drop of water is enough to drop your isolation below that 500 ohms per volt limit. But an isolation monitor can actually detect this. It's actually impressive of how well it tells you you have a problem very early. Basically, there's normally three connections you make. You connect to the high voltage positive, negative, and then the isolation monitor connects to your chassis. Once you have those, it can report the isolation either over CAN, some kind of communication network, or it can even provide digital outputs so you can turn on some lamps for the driver. This is what the Thunderstruck ground fault monitoring example is. This is how they suggest the wire in their system. And you can see that in the, the blue is your isolation monitor, and it just has two connections to your high voltage and a connection to ground, and it provides the ability to turn on some warning circuits if something goes wrong. You can even power your contactors off of this. A lot of times these go in your battery boxes so that you always have a isolation monitor where there's a high voltage battery. Normally, isolation monitoring should always be happening. It should always be working on in the car, especially once you do maintenance on the car. That's always should be on your checkoff list. What is the isolation? Did I put everything back together? Did a leak happen? Is there water? Is there a strand of uh, wire touching something that shouldn't? Okay, so that's it's isolation.